easiest to hardest character to play. So, hello everyone, my Today I want to make a T-list video about SF6. But I'm going to aim the list first and foremost at talking about actually the difficulty playing the heroes, playing the characters, playing the champions, whatever you call them, right? Rather than just being like, what is the best or the worst? Because I feel that it's more relevant, especially if you're a new player, especially if you're completely new to fighting games as a whole, you're probably more like, oh, should I play this or that character, right? We're giving me up for a week now, so we're players, so talk about that. Also sit here, I'm sorry my voice has been quite bad for the last two days, so I hope you can still hear me, but it definitely is a little bit, uh. so don't get subscribed, press the like button, and leave a comment below what you guys think is, it is character to play, right? <laughs> and so on. And, before we start going to characters, I will also, for that matter, explain each character's playstyle, right? So a little bit of a guide, so that here. but first and foremost, there is some correlation, though, to, of course, easier character to play and how good they actually are. Absolutely. It is not exact same thing, right? But it is a lot of overlap. Uh, if I make it very, very simple, imagine you are playing an OP character, an overpowered character that is extremely overpowered, right? That character will actually probably be the easiest character to play as well, right? Because if you can one shot everyone one punch, I mean, obviously, it's an extreme example, but you know, so there is some overlap between easiest character, I would say, and also better characters, for one thing. But more so probably, is that character that I put in, don't even try here, because I feel it's too hard to play basically, right, with a new player. These characters are probably usually also underpowered, because I will go into why in <laughs> my first step here, but basically, imagine you play a character, right, that is very hard to play, but isn't actually that much better than the other character, right? So just much harder to play. And that actually is somewhat overlapping right, with actual pro level as well, because if you're playing a character on pro level, which is way harder to execute, right? But you don't have any benefits from it, it's just harder to play the character, but the character actually is weaker than the character, or at least mid-range same thing, you probably actually will be a bit of a bad character, because oh, it's just harder to play the character for no benefit, you know what I mean? But anyway, let's go on to the list then, and I always say this thing when I do any kind of tea list, if you're new to my channel, I always start with the best and the worst, right? In this case, here it'd be easiest and don't even try, because that I feel is the most useful way to look at it, right? We, we can put like five characters in mid and be like, ah, whatever. You know what I mean? So, let's start with... I'm gonna take a drink here, baby. It's like... I <laughs> come in here. Jamie, then. Jamie? Bam. I put Jamie as probably the hardest character in the game to play. Jamie or JP, probably. Uh, JP, I thought about it on the video. JP is hard to play because you have this constant how do I range, how do I projectile. So JP is hard to play in the sense that you have to understand zoning perfectly, controlling, spacing, all this stuff, right? However, JP is also really good against bad players. So I think you can actually really succeed with JP, right? Uh, come with JP soon then. But Jamie, my god, I think Jamie is probably arguably one of the worst characters in the game, and also really hard to play, right? So, let's break it down, right? You can look at fighting game characters in a very, very simple format. You have speed character, you have strong character, and you have control character, right? Dalsim and JP, they're control, obviously. A lot of projectile fire monsters, they're controlling their zoning or whatever. It's not control, okay? They're controlling the field, right? Uh, tricky rather than speed here, right? So, Jamie is called Tricky, but let's call him Speed now. He's a fast-ish character, right? He's quick, he's nimble and so on, he can fly around and so on. He's part of the uh, speedy character. But he's the only speedy character that has to control his alcohol level, right? So, I think immediately here, Jamie is far more complicated than any other character in the game. And I really mean that because every other character, even, like, for example, Manan, she has medals, but they don't work the same way as Jamie because Jamie, because me I'm wrong here, but Jamie is the only character in this game that actually unlocks new abilities. So he has one to four alcohol levels, right? And every time you get new alcohol, you get a new you get a new ability, or even two new abilities, whatever. So he's the only character that gets new combos and do the more. Yes, they also do more damage and so on, but you basically get a bunch of new stuff, right? When you're playing Manan, you're just getting more uh, damage. She does more damage, right? But none of your actual combos have changed. There's no actual like. Uh, I have to do this thing, this now, etc. And also, with Jamie, it's not just a combo itself, but for example, he got um, 
little dive kick, right? At one alcohol. Dive kicks are very good to get into your enemy, but you have to get that alcohol. So that, that gives you a new game plan and so on, right? Like a new strategy and so on. So that's one thing that makes him is complicated, right? You have to learn what alcohol level is what team, you have to remember that, and you have to have different combos you're gonna produce, right? So if you have no alcohol, this is your go-to combo, you have four alcohol, this is your better combo, so you have to learn different combos and so on, right? I mean, basically any other character in the game, you have your one go-to, like this is my best combo, that's the thing with Jamie. Jamie also has the only special in the game that actually is, is combo-ball as well. So you kick it up in the air, and you can follow it up, I personally usually actually drink during that. It depends on course. if you can finish them, you finish them, right? But if I, if I get a special very early in, the, in like round two or three, I can you can drink as well. So that's coming to the next team where Jamie is very hard to play as well because he is while well, easier for him to get stacks because you can go away from the enemy to get stacks. That being said, though, I'm talking from a very beginning standpoint here, right? For new players, if you're playing Jamie, you have to take the Decision making of should I go back and drink? Should I do certain combos to do less damage but to give me a drink? Should I space here to drink and so on, right? Uh, where if you play another quick character, let's say Ken for example, which is like a quick character is, right? Uh, with Ken, you can just go at them. There is no discussion of should I do this thing or that thing. I mean, of course, you can have different kind of you know strategies and spacing, whatever. But the general idea that Jamie is like the only fast character. That sometimes he's gonna run away and drink, <laughs> right? And when should I do that? Or should I do this thing and end with a drink? Sometimes you don't wanna actually do the extra drinking ability for him because it gives you a little extra cast time, so you can't do certain combos or right? So it's a lot of it's a lot of mental stuff, like knowing when to drink and not to drink, and how to space and you know different play styles and so on. So I think he's uh, he's by far the most complicated, like speedy character in the game. And then lastly, he he also doesn't really play, or he's, he's, a, he's an aggressive character, but I would also put him in some kind of mid-range, actually. Like, Jamie is good at footsies, and he's good at, like, you know, kicking people. He, basically, if you play, if you understand the game too much, I'm trying to break it down very simply, right? but basically, when you play Ken, Ken is more like, I just punch you in the face, kick, 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 punch, kick, kick. He's very rushed down, right? But Jamie sometimes, you can be rushed with him too, but sometimes, as it's better going back a bit so you can add the elbow or fly in and you kind of kind of want them to actually be in that mid-range sometimes so it's much more complicated to can I actually set off Jamie in the right position and on that notion then Shan Li is also probably uh, very similar to Jamie yeah I think Shan Li also very complicated I think one thing we see immediately is like almost no one plays other characters I have checked out yesterday the data right for uh, playing characters and Shan Li is very little played, same with Jamie, they're both very unpopular, and uh, Sean Lee is very technical, okay? The technical character, crazy, so he has, first of all, from an input standpoint, I think she's like one of the few characters that have basically everything. She has shards, she got the typical dragon, she got the inputs, she got the fireballs, she got bunch of, like, ten plus different unique attacks, she got a stance. Uh, <laughs> Sean Lee, he's got a lot of stuff, okay? Sean Lee typically has a lot of unique attacks. A unique attack is when you're pressing uh, like a direction on your pad and, a, and an attack button, right? So for example, Shan Li has her like uh, or jump kick when you're pressing downward, or she can do this kick when you're pressing back to kick or something, right? That's a unique attack, so you change up your different uh, your inputs. And uh, character like Shan Li and Guy also step up, usually have a lot of unique attacks, but Shan Li is probably the most in this game. And because you also have that, she can sit in her, um, her like sitting down stance, gives you another like six unique attacks on that. So she got like 20 or something. She got crazy amount of unique attacks, right? Uh, much more input. She got the jumping imp. Yeah, and probably has the most different inputs in the whole game. Um, and uh, and also, that's a technical step of that. But also, then when you play Shan Li, what I used to try to explain to Jamie, right? I think that Jamie and Shan Li, so I bring it up as number two as well, here, is that. They're both, again, she's also quite strong on that mid-range, right? Uh, she can pressure you down, but Shan Li, like also Jamie, is pretty good at like pressuring you and then taking a little step back, right? And then maybe you jump over them. You do her weird like flip kick over them, or you do this overhead kick over them. And she's kind of good at that, kind of like, you know, not going away from them, but like a little half, almost half swing it from them. 
where you can pressure them with different input attacks, right? Um, this she's really strong at, and that is harder to play, generally speaking. And then again, so Ken, which is more like doing the face. So Ken, I would say it's easier, right? Uh, yeah, <laughs> Ken is for noobs. Uh, but seriously, I think I think Ken is probably one of the easiest characters to play in the game. Um, Ken is the opposite of what I explained with this character, right? From a quick standpoint, uh, with this Ken, you can run people down, you rush into them. He has a lot of different, um, you know, attacks, range, right? Low, high, low, high. Uh, they're quite quick. He got flash combos. But I think the thing with Ken, right? And Ken also very much is the most played character in the game. Ken and Rui is the most played characters. And I think we see a lot of Ken play the game, right? But Ken is very straightforward, right? It's kind of what I meant with both Jamie and Shani, where they are not actually that straightforward. You actually have to play them, and then you have to go to foot see and things and so on. But can you can just bum rush people all day long, right? Even on like really, even on like high, even on pro level, it's like I just gonna rush you down and spam Siri can. And but seriously, right? Ken is quite notorious for probably being. I would say that Ken is probably the most aggressive character in the game, roughly. But he's probably around that. Yeah, he's probably the most aggressive character in the game. Please be wrong, but I think that's true, and that of course, in my opinion, at least makes him easy to play, right? It really does. I'm not saying it's completely on hard, you know, pro level, whatever, right? It's gonna be much harder. They're gonna have great defenses and so on. But you know, in like a beginner, even up to like platinum or something like that, intermediate level, you're gonna rush people down with Ken, and more people won't be able to defend this thing, right? And I obviously I said Ken is actually the second most or the most played character in like pro and so on. So you probably see a lot of can strike, but you know you have to deal with that, and it's hard. I think a lot of people get a lot of free wins, right, by just playing overly aggressive with can. But I come back to what I mentioned earlier again, right, that it is easy, right? It is easy because you don't have to really think about it. And the thing is that if you compare can and Rude, that's got to Rude now, he is more into the Hadouken play, right? So so Ryu is the control character. He isn't like Dalsim, right? He has like a bunch of different projectiles and so on. But he still has projectiles. He has different angle. He has the you can do the shorter Hadoken, you can do the EX charging up Hadoken and you have more of that stuff, right? And when you're playing as Ryu, you really get that classic Street Fighter feel to it, right? If you sit there calmly, you throw your Hadoken at them, you Surya can have to jump into your right and you play that game a lot, right? So so the I play the game um, I, I play Jamie. <laughs> I play different characters, but the character I played the most now recently, a few days, has been Jamie. And there's a massive difference, right? When I rank I am, the Rus are then very, very calm. This is near patiently throwing your fireballs, trying to bait you, you know, and they can use rushes you into. And they can, these are like diamond cans, they use like, ah! Come like that, you know. They just rush you down anyway. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if they're bronze or like master level camp. These things can run into your faces and wham at you. It doesn't really matter, right? But I really do think that it is hard to play with because you have to be more patient, right? You have to bait more with the Hadokians and the Shirokans. His combos are shorter. Uh, he doesn't have how say it? he doesn't have as good rush down, right? So if you're playing and you play him aggressively, you don't have the same level of uh, how I say it, like uh, initiation, right? Like an in, in, like how to enter into the enemy, right? Where if you play as Ken again, Ken has a lot more angles to kind of you know get into you and, and open up a combo. It doesn't have that. Ryu's that is better at you know the Hadouken, so better at kind of the mid range, right? So he's definitely a harder character to play in Ken, and mostly I think it's important because they're playing in a different style, right? Uh, but they all are very similar, but you know, yeah, but. And again, I'm, this is mostly is from kind of beginning level, right? And again, I think it's easier to play uh, can by loft, right? Because you can be very aggressive and you just learn how to do combos, push at the block and so on. But I mean, generally speaking, right? You learn how to be on their face, right? But that also isn't really gonna work if you're playing as a Ryu style, right? So while well, they have the same inputs, they have the same you know mechanics, right? How the walk and the walk and touch the mic and so on. You have to really play them quite differently, right? And that's kind of where they are very different actually and if you think about it from like a character uh, design standpoint right uh, you know really typically in most uh, Capcom games has a stronger fireball you know he usually has more health than he's slower but stronger Ken is usually has lower health but he's faster and you know he can do longer combos right so for example one punch from from Ryu usually does more damage than Ken but Ken can combo more punches right so 
is the definitely the kind of place that there. But I think it's like a fair. I also think it's very fair that Ken is easier than you, and maybe he's here and it's up left. We can look at that later. But I, I definitely am gonna change this position here. I feel definitely like this, this is also gonna be like Ken easier. Uh, um, it's like another character that's easy. Marissa, she's super easy. Marissa is probably easiest character in the game. I'm gonna say. Uh, Marissa or Ken, yeah, <laughs> I think about it. Maybe Marissa, yeah. Marissa, in the same way that I just explained um, Ken, right? I find Marissa also very easy to play. Now, she's a muscular waifu, so I can see why she's popular. Because seriously, Marissa and Menan are very popular. And probably because they're hot chicks. <laughs> yeah. uh, but uh, Marissa is very popular. I think both because she's like a muscular abbey lady, which is hot. But she's also uh, easy to play. And she might be easier than Ken, but it's either her or Ken, probably it's Ken game. Why is easier then? Because Marissa, similar to Ken, right, is very straightforward. If anything, she's literally straightforward. She has this punch thing, it's right at you, right? Uh, she has armor, so if you're a new player, armor is that you can take one extra hit on you. So if, if you're charging up her attack, if they punch you once, you will still punch them, right? They punch you twice, or it depends on how much armor you have. So in some in some in some fighting games, you can have you know armor plus three or whatever, right? But basically, she has armor plus one most of the moves, right? So many of her moves, she can take two attacks uh, to break it, and that can be used against a lot of attacks, right? You know, a lot of new players are gonna basically hit into her armor, and you're gonna get a free to them, right? Her combos are very straightforward, I think. She punches them hard and up and down, and that's super. Um, but basically, she doesn't have much tricks. I suppose. Honestly, she's probably easier than Ken, yeah, because she has no fireballs. You just have to learn how to solve with fireballs. She has no, like, real trickery. She has no feints. I come to D and but D, I think, is a different character, but, you know, yeah, Marissa is, I, is, I would say, Marissa is probably the most noob character in the game. <laughs> but, but, but generally, because you, again, very straightforward. The game plan is, is very clear. You will use Queen to them, right, because she's a powerful character in, you know, close combat. Uh, there's no real like spacing or zoning or whatever you have to go into them. Could you have the footsie or whatever? I'm not saying you have to do that, but you know, especially on l or lower level, you can do that thing. She's really beneficial of her too, that her armor ability uh, beats drive impact. So if someone drive impacts you, which is this short thing, right, with double heart, if someone does that against Marissa, you're doing her armor plus ability, you will still win that. <laughs> That's really useful, especially I think on lower player because. People probably spam a lot and so on. And I haven't played the game in bronze or whatever, but I assume people spam drive pet a lot, you know what I mean? So, yeah, I don't know. Marissa, I, I find Marissa is honestly probably. Is you see my hate, my salt? No, I, I play Jamie too much. It's terrible. The matchup is terrible if you play Jamie. <laughs> she just sits there and smacks you when you get close to her, yeah. Likewise, I do think that Sangif also is somewhat pretty easy. And I actually have a story about that. Let's put Sangif up here. So, when I worked at Blizzard, uh, many years ago, we had a Street Fighter 4 tournament. Okay, yeah, Street Fighter 4, right? And uh, I won the tournament, so it was easy. But uh, the story is that my friend then, I had this friend, a co worker, he used to um, play another game. He's the best player in the world, actually, in this other game. And it was kind of funny because my first work at Blizzard, I talked to this guy, right? And it's very common in, in the gaming industry. When you ask someone, like, you know, oh, what game do you play? Oh, I play Zelda or whatever. Oh, this is my favorite game. You say, like, oh, what's your favorite game or whatever? It's kind of like a very common... <laughs> Honestly, I, I always ask that, you know, when I meet new colleagues or you meet someone. You're always like, oh, what game are you playing right now? And so on, right? So he's like, well, I'm playing this game. Um, this, like, multiplayer game. I won't say which game it's for, for private. But he's played this game, right? And I, my shadow friend... Is the best player in the world in that game. So I'm just like, oh, you know this guy? I'm, the b I'm good friends with this person that won Dreamhack and this thing and so on. He's like, oh, yeah, this guy? Oh, he's in my, yeah, we're the same teammates. I'm like, what? So it turned out that my new co worker was actually in the same clan or, you know, team, five man team, right, with my uh, older friend. <laughs> so then we were friends, right? But anyway, this guy is very good at esports game, right? And he wanted to basically not win them, but at least try to win, right, on um, this uh, in house tournament. So he asked me to train him for a week before the tournament, and I and I picked Gi for him. So we trained Gi for like a week, and I was like, Lariat, baby, spinning attack. And he won every <laughs> he crushed people. He crushed everyone. He used, enough, he, used, he used like a five, six days training, and he could beat everyone, uh, except me, of course. Right? But he could beat the, the whole rest of the whole studio, game studio, easily. Uh, I do think that Sangit is pretty easy to play, honestly. 
I do. I, I mean, I picked him purposely, right, as a four, though, because I, I knew that, well, he's pretty good against bad players, and like, you know, bronze, silver, or whatever, because you can still alert how to spin, you know, <laughs> do your pile driver. And I guess if you play with modern controls in this game, he's very much easier because you have one button for pile drive. But I really do think that Sandy, similar to Marissa, is easy to play, right? And I'm not, I'm not talking about, you know, pro level because. Pro level, you're gonna have Sangi versus JP or Darth Sim, and you can never get close to them because they spam shit you, right? But you know, in most games, right, people can't actually zone that well. They can't control the field well until you get something like Platinum or higher, right? They can't actually really control the field that well. So Sangi is gonna have a huge advantage against characters like uh, most characters, like Jamie, uh, who's more uh, Kimberly, uh, you know, a Honda, whatever. You're gonna have a massive advantage, Blanca, I guess, as well. The cat that can't shoot, right? Uh, and I really think it's gonna be much easier for you, because Sangip is pretty straightforward to play again, right? That being said, though, I think it's more technical, it's harder to do his inputs than, uh, for example, uh, Marissa, right? But I do think they are very similar. I actually think it's easy, but I, but I will say this thing, right? It's probably like a curve, honestly, for both Marissa and Sangip, where it is really easy in the beginning. To get pretty good with them and really beat people at maybe after gold or whatever pretty easily and then you get to maybe plus the more diamond and then it gets really hard because now, now they're gonna be able to yeah depending on the matchup and now they're gonna really own you so i won't say this is like this i said again that you know this is not sex thing it's a tier list right it's a best character but i think that sangif is easy to play and then you're gonna reach a threshold where it's really hard to play in certain matchup i mean it's gonna be really i mean obviously I don't know if Sangit mains are gonna be like, no, he's the worst, it's so unfair, JP spikes me all the time. Yeah, against certain characters like JP, Sangit is really hard to play. And so that's probably where you could argue Sangit is, is harder to play because certain matchup is really terrible or not terrible. Uh, okay, yeah. What I mean is he necessarily isn't, you know, terrible as in win rate, you. JP probably, but still. <laughs> more so, I mean hard to play that yeah like terribly hard to 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 be him in certain matchups but I, I but i but i still think you have a massive advantage rather than a disadvantage in in more matchups there aren't that many control cards there's only two of them i think you, you probably have a massive advantage against most people who can't play the, i mean like beginner players in the beginning so i think it's like here i do like this maybe it's here but i i, I think it's fair i think it's, fair. it's also very straightforward character you know you have to be patient. Okay, now, what more do we have? Another character is pretty straightforward. Or actually, let's take another character that's hard. DJ, I think actually it's pretty hard. I don't know if it's as hard as this character. Maybe, uh, I probably put him hard probably to begin with. So, uh, DJ, um, he's a really cool character in this game. I really like how they made DJ. DJ, I think, is one of the coolest characters. He's arguably the best character in the game. He's a really good character. Uh, if I make an extra T-list right, I put DA probably in ST, it's very, very good. Uh, but DA is, I would say, obviously, obviously hard to play. I think you agree with me, obviously hard to play, because DA, you have all these feints, right? You can do this, like, eh, come on! You can do this fake booms, right? Wherever his attacks call, but he basically just, you know, soaking booms, right? Uh, you can fake that, you can kind of face the motor stuff, he, he's moving a lot, it's very, his cool knee thing, when you fly, Slightly upward, you need them in the face, but that execution is kind of hard. And you know, he has this weird glide thing that's kind of punishable. So, DA has, I think, honestly, DA is very popular. You face him a lot. Um, I'm ranked if it is the case, right? DA is, I feel DA is very popular in every rank. Um, a, more people are very good with him and so on. But yeah, I think he's tricky to play, man. A lot of weird inputs, a lot of. Again, all these fakes or some stuff like that, right? Um, and you have to maybe you have to put spacing with him. So yeah, D has I think one thing with DA, he's he's similar to Guile, right? Of course, and they've all been very similar with their both better glass only booms and slash but whatever, and you know their charge characters and so on and stuff like that. But the thing is that Guile is a very simple character, right? It's always been very simple because Guile only has flash kick and sonic boom, right? Now he also has the the better like the charge uh, sonic boom but he only has like two uh, inputs and it's all been guy thing he got very few um, actual mechanics right uh, but da while being similar to guile especially in the older games they're very very similar with like how the inputs are and what they do you know like up down is anti and so on 
But they always had more options, right? So in the older games, they had this like frontal kick, so the back fort uh, kick, uh, which is not in this game, but you know, you see me in the right. And he always has again that he has his own flash kick, right? Up, down, and then does the upper kick thing and so on. So they're very similar, and then I kind of add that one. Uh, but again, then DDA basically always had more moves, right? It has like twice the amount of moves that Guile has. And the way that's balanced, right? So my actual like balance curve in the game is that Guile's flash kick is better, I would say, than either of these up or, up or forward move in the, in the older games. Flash kick is better. However, at certain you know situations, right? DDA's back forward kick is better than flash kick. And also sometimes DJ's up down kick is better than flash kick. Usually not, but sometimes, right? Uh, so DJ having more options means that if you of course do the correct call, right, it's gonna be better. What's gonna be, yeah, it's gonna be better, right? But guy is easier to play, honestly. And and, and guy from like a strategy aspect, you kinda have well, I wanna have flash kick, so you have know, you know, of course you want to move too. But it's like they're very similar, but DJ basically is have way more moves. And in this game it's even more, right? Because you have all the fakes and so on. So yeah, I think the DJ is hard to play and uh, that being said one reason I, I won't put them in don't even try is because like i said earlier right this t list isn't the attached completely from power level it can't be because if a character is very very powerful again it's easy to play them right because you're gonna get more out of your character uh, and we for example jamie i think is you know, he's a bad cat in the game, probably. I would say so. People are already ranting over him losing alcohol for fights, so yeah. Uh, but the aim is, I think, a weak character, honestly. Um, so, if he if he is weaker, let's say he's weak, he's weaker than the I think, absolutely. And it's also probably harder to play in the right? So yeah, I would put him in the same, that I won't fit, fit in the same category, because the is also a really good character. So basically, the right? Harder to play than Ken, I would say, but you get more out of it because it's probably a better character than Ken in the game currently, of course. But yeah, I can see Jamie getting a buff, obviously. <laughs> if there's one character that, that needs a buff, it's probably Jamie. It is really weird, the whole Asgore thing. It's probably, yeah, one thing I think with Jamie is that his command grab too, with free alcohol, doesn't do any damage. He just opens up for a combo, which is the same with Junior Young and so on. So it's something new with that, uh, that kind of character, but again, that's yet another <laughs> complexity on that character, yeah. He's a very complex character where, for example, if you have a command grab that you dealt high damage, right? You would prefer that, yeah. I think I think almost every player, except absolute, almost, okay, if you have like full meter, but the point is basically, if you don't have like full meter and want to do your special tree, right? Uh, having a command grab did high damage on tree alcohol would be much better, probably nine out of 10 times, except now it's like you, you, you command grab them that opens up for certain very specific combos right that you don't need a combo the combo didn't even do that much damage so if you still had like a command game did like high damage that would be much better <laughs> but that character like Junior Young and so on also doesn't have that so it's kind of like in that character type but still uh, it's a point of a complexity right um but yeah this feels fair to me honestly that's probably where D is um JP hard man jp is hard he's either hard or he's either don't even try or hard he's like up here uh, i do think that jp is very hard to play i made a video about that right how to play jp because jp is my main idea jp is because i play the most uh by far so i love that you know control character right and i think that seems like uh jp is more my thing i love his grab and so on so i can sit there for 10 hours talking about jp right? this character i played the most probably 20 hours now something only with jp at least um but the thing is that, as I said in my longer video, link below for that, how to play AP, it's, when you play AP, right, you have to really think about spacing tremendously a lot. How, should I go back, should I go forward, should I do this thing? You have to think about, um, if you have good distance from them, right, you have to, then you can spam the spikes or whatever. But if you're in like mid-range, which is where his weakest is, you have to kind of figure out, okay, what should I do now? Should I like spike to, you know, hold them back from me? Should I do the throw to kind of bait them for a high damage? Or should I summon these, uh, the tendrils in the sky because they can protect me? And then I can maybe teleport. And he got a bunch of, you know, he has so much mechanics, right? That you have to kind of judge what's the best thing to do. And the thing with JP, which is inherently for his character type. So he's a character called Strong Control, right? So he's a very high damage character with control mechanics. 
which means his recovery time is absolute terrible. So comparing to Guile, so I talked in my other video, Guile is also control, but it's like speed control, right? So Guile is very quick. You can spam sonic booms, and if you do a mistake, you can actually still probably block, you know, in the stages. JP is balanced as Testament is or whatever in all the fighting games where you have very, very high damage projectiles, but of course then that means again that if you miss, you're screwed, right? So then I think with JP is very, very hard to play for new players, because you're gonna get punished, you're gonna get bum-rushed by Marissa and Ken and this character all the time, right? If you, don't, if you do the wrong thing, you have to solve correctly, you have to space correctly, you have to go back, you have to teleport certain things, you have different teleports, <laughs> so you can teleport back and forth. You can summon this thing, and you have you grab an air. And he's he's like a very different character to play, right? Um, than the other characters. And of course, Dove Sim is the only one that is close to him in the same kind of control spamming. But I think that Dove Sim is easier to play the JP a lot, actually. I think I probably put Dove Sim here, probably, comparably. Because everything I said with JP. Is true with Dal Sim as well, in general speaking, right? They don't control, we got a space and so on. But the thing is that Dal Sim, though, he's much faster than JP, right? Because they're not the same kind of archetype, right? We, again, JP, they're both control, but JP is like, again, strong control, slow ass control, right? And Dal Sim is like mid fast control. So Dal Sim is much more spammy, you can do a multiple fireball and throw and so on. And they usually can punish you for it, right? Where JP is like, you punch immediately if you do a mistake, right? <laughs> so, no, Dasim is way more open to you actually do mistakes. Dasim's um, teleport are way more abusable, I think, than JP's. Uh, I guess bad players, like scrums. Um, but yeah, I think basically what I say with JP is true with Dasim, but it's easy with Dasim, right? Uh, and also probably, when it comes to Dasim, though, that his combos are more straightforward, actually. Because Dasim is like in the fifth game, you cannot throw your fireball, and then you teleport behind them, right, to mix up their, to mix up and so on. It's pretty straightforward. Where with JP, you actually preferably keeps them at max distance and how to zone that out. So yeah, JP is definitely the most like controlled cat in the game because he isn't terribly in in, in close combat. He's actually he's he's the weakest at mid range JP, but you you struggle the most against a person standing kind of almost at you because then he can punish you when you do it. Yeah. Um, but basically, right, what I mean is that the JP, he's very, very strong at max range, right? That's his best ability. The spikes, spam, and so on. You're like full screen, right? With the same on the other hand, he's kind of like this weird character where you're pretty good at max range, but you also kind of want to teleport around and change these things and so on. So with the sim, it's like you want to control it, but you also pressure with the sim, you know? The sim is a character where you, you, you control the field, and then sometimes you go close combat with them and so on. And the AP, I would say, is a character where you actually never want to go close combat. If you if you can if you can always keep them on max distance, that's where you want to be, right? And I think that is also again what makes AP harder than because the AP is a character that truly excels right at max range, where Dal Sim excels at some kind of like weird max to mid range where you punish them for moving, and then you also have a bunch of different weird like fly in thing and all that stuff. That being said, though, yeah, Dal Sim is 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 mentally the same as the worst cat in the game, though, because it's, it's to drive impact and so on. So I'm not saying that Dal Sim is a good cat or whatever, but I heard the highest ranked player currently Dal Sim though made this video. <laughs> so yeah, if you have Galaxy Brain, I don't know, but yeah, I think Dal Sim is probably, you know, he has more options aggressive in the AP and so on. Yeah, it's easy for him to push pressure and so on. Um, I think this honestly is fair. The AP is probably the hardest control character. And Dal Sim is second hardest to play. Yeah, I, I, I still have to go back to this feeling that Dal Sim is easier to play than JP, honestly. I know people can be really angry, JP like, is so easy to play, just spam the spikes. Yeah, but I mean, he's really good in certain situations, right? But it's, it's, if you actually punish JP, and if, you, if you're on top of JP, right, he's so screwed, yeah. So that's the problem with JP, right? If you're playing, and again, this list is mostly for new players, right? The beginning to intermediate players and then it's like well you know if you <laughs> yeah then it's like you're probably gonna get rushed down a lot from you play jp um anyway let's go on but this is fair um guile then easy yeah guile easy play man guile is like the opposite of jp right as i explained and in more the video too uh, as i mentioned earlier guile is like you have really high recovery time right so you can throw your booms and be safe anyway you don't have many moves, right? You only have two abilities, basically. 
he does have like 10 unique attacks like Shan Li. <laughs> you know, Guile has all the different weird inputs, but but mostly, you know, Guile is incredibly straightforward. Uh, his game plan hasn't really changed in all the games since the last, you know, you, you Sonic Boom them, and if you jump, you flash kick, right? It's obviously more to it, but that's the basic, right? And then, you know, you kind of dash at them and throw them, or you have the different input attacks. And his combos, maybe this is me, because I used to play Guy, okay? So Guy was my main character in Chapter 4, so I used to play Guy competitively. So maybe it's just my brain, but I also find Guy's combos, in my opinion, very easy to do. Okay, like when you jump in and do your flash kick EX or what, I always find the charge combos very easy to input. But that might be a little bit biased here, because I do think that new players should struggle with charge inputs. But I think they're pretty easy if you get the, if you get the basic of them. Like, for example, with guys, then you jump in, you hit them, you land, you do like a medium uh, punch on the ground, and you EX up again, you know. Because you can charge on the way down, right? Uh, Sean Lee, same thing, speed and burst hit combo, same input. Uh, what I should explain to people is that what you have to learn when you're playing like Guile, Shani, Ihonda, Blank, and so on, right, is that you have to learn and basically you have to learn how to like charge during a combo. Right? I think that's the, what people actually struggle with mostly. What I see in trying to teach friends of players all over the years is that usually they struggle with like how do I, you know, like if I play Balrog Boxer, if I do like punch, punch, punch. How do I now do this hard punch? Well, while you're doing you no know, light punch, you know, light the app, light the app, light the app, you have to charge back, right? So you're like light, 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 hard. That's gonna have to input it, right? You have to keep pressing back on the same time. So if you jump with like guile, by pressing down right, you are charging down, and then you can land and immediately flap again, basically, right? And I think that as soon as that kind of that understanding comes to a person, I think that guy combos are easy to input. Not the ah, best combos, but I mean, you know, the basic combos, right? The bread and butter combos, uh, I think are easy to input him. And the same goes for Honda and uh, so on as well then. But, so I think guy has pretty straightforward combos, like in that level, right? So you get pretty good with him. And then you, I know you have the whole boom loop and you can do the thing, but I mean, that's like pro level, right? You know, I'm, talk, I'm talking about like up to plot and whatever, you know, you, you want to get good at the better game. I think Guile is one of the best characters to start with. Yeah. And, and again, you know, Guile and JP and Dalsim, right? They are actually all kind of similar because it, it's a lot about the projectile zoning and so on, right? Guile has this, um, I'll say, this chargeable boom uh, that he got in the fifth game. So you can do one boom and then another b bigger boom kind of thing, right? You can create like a wind thing and then you do another one. So Guile is that kind of, again, like a. Control speed, control character, right? And what I would say again, then that he's like an easier version of JP, right? So if you wanna play, my point, is, I guess, if you wanna play, like, my point is that <laughs> uh, if, if you wanna be this control character, this sonar character, uh, but if you're a new fighting game player, right? I would recommend Guile, right? Uh, and then if you really like that play style, but you wanna have more complexity and more like strange mechanics, teleport, whatever, then you either pick Dalsim or JP, right? if you like that Guile play. You like the booms so on, but you want to have you know weirder booms. <laughs> you want to have teleporting booms or whatever. You know, you pick up on those two guys, right? But I think Guile is a great character to start with if you want to play this like you know projectile play, right? Um, but I don't know. I think that's a good. I think just honestly, I think it's a very good comparison. There is probably like a huge actually, I I think genuine gap between Darcim and Guile. Yeah, it's at least it's like one theory between them, and then JP. So yeah, this this to me feels actually. I feel very confident on this character, honestly. <laughs> the most probably, actually. Yeah, because I feel it's easier to judge this controlled character like, compared to any other character. It's easier to compare them because it is kind of clear what the mechanics do, right? Oh, he can do like two booms and this boom thing. He can do, you know, like throw stuff, so it's much more complicated, yeah. Uh, anyway, another character, and Luke, I feel it's very easy to play too. I feel Luke's easy, man. Luke is like a little bit easier. Yeah, I think so, yeah, because Luke has that classic Shotokan playstyle, right? So he's also focused on, he got his like sandblast punch, right? It's kind of Kadoke. He also has his like uppercutter, so he's very focused on that classic uh, Ryukan playstyle, right? But he, he does feel to me at least like an easier, again, just see, he's probably honestly somewhere in the middle between Ken and Ryu in, in like the mechanics. I think it's a good, I think it's a good comparison, right? I was thinking about that. I think it's a good comparison because he's a little more combo than Ryu is, a little more faster, 
but it's not as much as Ken. So he's very he's similar to those two. I, I think he is really in the middle between them. I think he is in the middle, yeah. And so basically everything I said with Ken and Ryu earlier is kind of true for him. But he's like a mix of that, right? So I think he's, you know, he's to play. It's pretty straightforward. You do as I said, you do the same typical strategy, or you go more aggressive with him, right? Similar to Ken. Yeah, I think he's like a pretty good sitting. I'm just gonna say that he's like he's like the mid. He's the son of Ryu and Ken. Yeah, he's a mixture of them. I think that's like a fair. That beat feels very fair actually. Yeah. Okay, so let's go on. I won't say much about Luke. No, but I feel everything I said earlier about Ken and Ryu is true for him. Um, honestly. Now let's see. Um, now it gets trickier here, okay? All these kind of tricky. So Blanca is hard. <laughs> Blanca is funny because <laughs> it's just a six sister and the Blancas. <laughs> no, I played Blanca. Yeah, Blanca, you never meet Blanca, man. I have faced two Blancas in like a week now. It's crazy. And both of them used to do this like Oompa Loompa dash thing, right? Both of them used to do this thing. And, I'm, and, the, and the guy, the first guy I faced was Platinum. I was like high Platinum. Blanca, and the only thing he does is like spamming the ball thing like this, right? And I'm just like, how is how he got plopped to them? He's, like a, he's like bronze playing this game, right? And I'm just gonna beat him because he's just spamming the same shit, right? And I was like, how did he get to like. So he, and, and then the next, you know, match was like one to me. Now he spams the dive thing and the jump thing, and it's like, he's just spam shit, you know? I really feel like the Blanca. I guess the, the Blanca plays all a certain kind of people, right? They really, you know, turn into the Blanca. Um, but honestly, uh, I guess phone call, whatever they, wait, two missed calls? I won't edit this video, too lazy. Uh, okay, whatever, uh, they, they turn off. Um, <laughs> two missed phone calls. Anyway, sorry about that. Uh, I was thinking about Blanca Rage, you know, but Blanca is like hard, honestly. I say it here, Blanca is the character I have the hardest time to judge, because I, as I keep saying, I never face any Blancas, okay? No one plays Blanca at all, it seems. And I have myself played him more than used to be like, I want to test Blanca a bit. So I sat yesterday and played Blanca for like two hours, test him a bit. And he, he feels like Blanca, you know? You fly around, you do the ball thing, and you can also summon the little Blanca bomb thing. And that's pretty annoying, actually, because you can summon this bomb guy, give it power, and then it, then you can set up for a combo or, you know, force them to block in a weird way or whatever, so... That's interesting, but I don't know. I do think the blank that is somewhat easy to play. He's just kind of crazy, right? And it's like the mentality of being insane playing him. But I don't think blank is a hard cat to play, honestly, because he's hard to have all these weird abilities. But the thing is that, like, when they sort of punish blank. Right? If I was around all the time, you can't really punish him. And I do think that, if anything, you probably will win a lot if you play Blanca on low level because no one else plays him, so you're gonna be. <laughs> but I think Blanca is. I put him in the mid, actually. Yeah, he's not like super straightforward because you have to understand what ball to fly or whatever, but he's incredibly weirdly aggressive. And you have all these, you know, strange inputs and mechanics and all this like 50 50 randomness to it. And it might just be that everyone you ever see play Blanca are like crazy. So it feels like he's extra crazy, but that's kind of it, you know. But I also do think the Blanca is quite 50-50, because he got all these weird um, ball things that's hard to determine. Like he can jump backward and then fly forward again. That was the thing I tried out yesterday the most. So he's a new bit now, you can, you can jump back with Blanca. Then if you charge current, you can fly in again. <laughs> so that ability I think is really good. Maybe, maybe I should main Blanca, so no one else can play him. But, but honestly, like that thing is really good to trick people and so on. So he has a lot of weird options, and then again, this doll thing this new in this game is really annoying, right? Especially on, I think, a low-level player. Yeah, you summon the doll thing, and they're like, how should I block it? And you can, it, it jumps, it eats it, and so on, and they're like, what's happening? And then you fly at them, and there's all this weird, weird mumbo-jumbo with Blanca, right? And they also have like a command grab, there's like range to jump at them, right? The bite thing. It's like mid-screen command grab-ish, I guess. You can actually punch it easily, but still. <laughs> it's like a really weird character, Jesus Christ, man. Um, but I will say that Blanca is a character I have the hardest time to determine because I, I have faced every other character to some extent, but I mean, of course, some of them are much more common to face, like all the time, like Ken is the one you fight all the time. Right? Uh, I think Ken is more popular on, on, on lower ranks, though, but still, even on my rank, the character I say the most is Manon. Manon, Manon, yeah, she's probably the person I face, and Marissa. Marissa is very common, Ryan, uh, with my latest character, yeah, Marissa, I face a lot, Marissa Manon, 
Uh, en blank är like, once per week. <laughs> so, uh, that's hard. But let's take out Manon then. So Manon, Menon, Manon is a god, yeah. Menon, M- Mammon. Mammon is a god of greed, right? Menon. Menon, uh, I think she's pretty easy actually. I'm gonna go with the Limir and say she's probably. I mean, she's pretty easy to Sangif actually. Yeah, I'm gonna put her in easy, bro. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put her easy. I think she actually is pretty easy. So. Similar to my argument for Sangiv, right? She's a grappler, um, you know, that wants to go into them, you want to grab them, you want to get close to them, right? It's very straightforward, her. She's very, very straightforward. Uh, I, I saw this tweet yesterday, it's almost like, she's just Sangiv, but with boobs, right? <laughs> with, because she got like, if you got medals, like five of medal, you do like more damage than Pile Driver, but you, you know, you also get like a nice ass or whatever, yeah. So she's um, very powerful. Probably one of the better cats in the game. I think I think so. Um, I still don't people say she should get nerfed. The AP is definitely the most hated character, but I still people say that she should get nerfed too. And I can see why, because what is weird with her is the whole metal thing stays right. And I completely agree with people saying that. Some people are saying that, you know, Jamie should get buffed. Uh, he, should also, he should stay drunk or whatever, if she can stay with powers. But I, I don't agree with that, because Jamie's drinking ability it's easier to pull off than her medals because you can read by yourself. Uh, so I think that's fair. However, it is very, very strange, I think, once in the game, that Manon currently, right, basically has sure that you get these medals, so you do more damage or more, and the medals, they stay over the rounds. So depending on how the first round goes, she can be way stronger second round, right? So if she has, if she gets one seer on you, and she gets like five medals the first round, you're basically screwed because now you're going to have to face this like, you know, really good man on players, you're gonna drop your half life, pad love you immediately. It is so much damage, and it feels really weird and unfair that she is, I guess, like a snowball. You know, she, she gets stronger, and she's already leading, and she gets even stronger basically by leading. It's basically uh, what's called an anti, you know, reverse rubber band. You know, rubber banding is like a Mario card, right? If you're in the last place, you get a blue shell or a lightning bolt, right? Or a star. But she's like rever- anti or reverse rubber banding. Which is like, she's leading, she gets more stuff by leading. And now the next round starts, you're down one point, right? And she beat you the first round and got a lot of medals. So now you have an even harder round to be able to, you know, take that back, right? And if you then manage to get a 1-1, she definitely, most likely has maximum medal now. Uh, maybe you had it, but definitely not probably. Right? And you press it in the third round and she has like, you know, max medals and does even more damage. So it's... She, if it's really weird, I've seen people say, for example, that she should lose a medal after per round. And that's probably what I would go with. I would probably decrease her medal count by like one or something when every round starts. So you wouldn't have this like five start, maybe like a four start or whatever. Uh, maybe minus two or something. I don't know. But I, I can see them balancing that actually. Uh, it does feel really strange. But anyway, this is the wrong analyst now. But I want to put it out because all that being said, right? I talked about it earlier again here, this is a list of easy to hard to play, but it still is true, of course, like I said earlier, right, that if a character is straightforward or overpowered, right, they're easier to play. And because her ability is just, I get medals, I do more damage, there's no new combos, just more damage, right, it is easy to play, right? But again, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, Jamie is like, oh, I get 10 new combos. Yeah, (laughs) that is way harder to play. And I think that she's like, I see some men on fast being like, no, Jamie is easy or whatever, no, but I think, I think anyone has to admit that the system of alcohol with Jamie is much more complicated than her medals, right? Uh, as I keep saying, it's because he actually gains a bunch of new stuff, uh, new mechanics, new combos, new unique attacks, new weirder move, and all the things are kind of weird too. So yeah, you get all this weird stuff, right? And she just gets more stats, right? So of course it's better getting more, better, but it's easier right, getting more stats. And then... I thought about it, that she also then doesn't lose her medals right into the next round. Again, it's very streamlined. Uh, so I think she's powerful in the game. I think she's like top tier in the game, probably. But also then, regardless if she's top tier or not, she's very straightforward, right? Because you don't even lose medals, so you don't even think about it. You just keep doing damage, right? There's nothing to really manage there. You don't have to manage her resource. Right? With Jamie, you have to manage the alcohol every new round, right? Uh, which I think is more fair though, because it's easy to get my echo. But still, it is much more a skill to have, uh, uh, some setting to have. So yeah, I think she needs to play. 
she's straightforward and similar than to the Marissa and my Sank argument, right? She doesn't really have any projectiles, there's no control mechanics, and she's similar to Sangi, but she got some really weird kicks, right? But she's flying around with these kicks, they have really good range, so she also can engage that easy to. Yeah, I think her engage is better than Sangi's, uh, thanks to her like really long range kick and so on, and she got this uh, special one that's pretty fast and so on. So, yeah, I think she has an easier way to attack the opponent than Sangif. She has a easier footsie, probably better footsie as well, but just yes, speaking easier, I'm thinking about difficulty, easier definitely than Sangif, I would say. Sangif has more limited way to punish people with women and so on, or like mid range. Uh, she got way more range than one, she can do that. And then she basically is like him, you know, you really throw them. So, yeah, I think that she's an easier Sangif, honestly, probably. And almost probably a better Sangif too. Because with the medal system, yeah, he's probably definitely. I would, I, I would rank her bo both as a better cat than if a better grappler, and also <laughs> easier to play. Honestly, I think so. Yeah, easier inputs as well. Yeah, easier inputs definitely. So um, this to me seems fair, but I still think that probably like Giles is easier to play and Ken and so on. And Marissa, I do think that is. Yeah, I'm gonna. I really feel confident that Marissa is the easiest cat in the game. Honestly, yeah, I, I feel that's like really easy. But okay, let's keep going. This looks good, man. Um, Honda is probably with blank case, uh, somewhere like that, right? Yeah. Um, so if you go out, it's harder to play them, right? Yeah. So Honda, similar to Blanca, you got the dive thing, right? You got the headbutt, you got the sumo headbutt, you got the sumo butt thing, you fly down, uh, you got the command grab. I mean, Honda feels to me very similar to the old Hondas. I don't think it's new for Honda. <laughs> I will admit that the Honda is also a okay, character you don't face nearly enough. He definitely has faced a lot more Honda than Blanca. Blanca is like, you know, once, again, once a week. But he, he feels very similar to the old school Honda, which basically means that you're crunching down, you're shorting your attacks. And I, I think he's pretty straightforward, honestly, right? You, again, you, but he's a short character, so you're pressing down, right? So diagonally bound down. And then you either fly like this, right? <laughs> and then you fly in. But. With Blanca, it's more like, you know, like it's more crazy stuff, right? In Honda, I think a little more, I wait and then I fly and I kind of react to what you do, whatever. And honestly, I think it's easier than Blanca because Blanca is a little more, again, like a loose cannon, right? So you kind of like, have you, you, are, you are more aggressive. With Honda, feels more reactive to what the other guy is doing. Um, so I think they're, but I think they're about roughly mid. And you have to say that Blanca is probably a little more hard because you have that Blanca doll, right? So it's a little bit more skill to use them, I'm correct as well. But, but I will say that I, I barely now remember what is new with the Honda. He just feels like very similar to the older Hondas. He got some new abilities, but they don't really feel that they're changing his game. His game plan just seems to be more or less exactly the same, right? Like the old games. But Blanca has a little more new stuff. If he's a little bit strange gameplay, but whatever, I don't know. he's like mid, whatever, Honda is mid, okay, I don't really care that much, but Honda is, he's, he's like blind, no one plays him anyway. Um, now we got this bunch of wives left, Jesus Christ, man, it happened by accident, this bunch of ladies left. Uh, Kimberly definitely is hard, okay, let's look at Kimberly, she's very technical, might be even don't try, maybe she's even here, honestly. Kimberly feels very technical, um, she's, she's probably here, she's probably down here somewhere. Uh, uh, if he's the hardest to play because he goes in reverse order, right? So Jamie is hard to play, yeah. Uh. Well, I think JP is probably harder than Shan Lee, though. It's like this, you know. Ooh, so maybe here. I thought the Kimberly case. Kimberly, hmm. Maybe it's easier than Shan Lee, though. Oof, I don't know. Kimberly is hard to play, okay? I think Kimberly is a good character. She's very, very annoying. Super high pressure. She ducks into you. And I, I used to play Guy a lot for a while. So obviously I know my uh, Ninja Bunshiken Shimpo flip on. So basically, right, um, Kimberly has this thing called the run, right? And this is uh, more or less what all the Ninja has, right? The uh, Guy and his master and so on. They all have this, uh, the Senku, they all have this like run input. So the, how it works is you, you put the input right, it's like quarter uh, quarter kick, right, and you're running. And then you're running, you then put all the kicks or whatever, 
Then I can fly in or you can go up or down or whatever. And that, that's the being again in the game then to go to character. So, so the whole strategy is pretty straightforward, or you see it before. But there's a lot of skill there, I would say, to pick the right thing. And then Kimberly has an, another advanced thing on it, which I like, that if you don't do anything, she runs on the opponent and steps on them, and then you fly into them again, where you can either then throw them or you can kick them, right? So it's like another mix up mind game. So honestly, Kimberly, in my opinion, is like a JP player, right? Probably is the hardest mashup. I don't know. One of the hardest least. Very, very hard to deal with her, yeah. You can spike her as well, of course, right? But if she gets like mid range to you, it is very hard to her. She's very much like that. El Fort uh, thing, whatever, right? Yeah, it's very, very mixed up. Rainbow Mika, whatever. Yeah, it's very hard to defend against Kimberly because she has all this weird uh, jump down, throw kicks up and down and so on. She's very, very good at pressuring you. Um, so I think she's a good character. Definitely would rank her high in the game. Not that the, not that the best character, but I think it's fair to say she's one of the better characters. But everything I explained, though, right? It's it is complicated to play her. You know, if you're like a new player, she's not very straightforward. Even if she's like Ken, you know, a rushdown character, right? Because honestly, from a strategy aspect, she's probably the most similar to Ken. That you run at them and do different shit in your face, right? Yeah. So it's probably the most similar to Ken, maybe, at least from that aspect, you're very rushed down, right? But Kimberly has way more weirder inputs and weirder, like, stranger this or that thing. And then she has, she can throw her um, spray can, like a bomb, similar to Ibuki or whatever, like you're putting out some weapon that explodes soon. And uh, she goes to air throw, of course, and the guy has to so on too. Um, yeah, I do find a complicated character, like, straight up, honestly. And she has all this weird, like... Music team gives like a buff or something. <laughs> yeah, she got a bunch of really weird inputs. And that being said, though, on the same time, I don't. I, when I play, I played her myself a bit. I started playing Kimberly uh, after JP. So she's probably the kind I played the second most, maybe third most, honestly. Yeah, because I mean, I used to play Guido, so I kind of like that playstyle, right? Uh, that being so, I made my bias. I don't know because I do feel that I have played this, you know, ninja playstyle. You run and do this type thing. I played that a lot before, so I don't, so I feel quite comfortable with that. But I, I, I do imagine that new players are gonna struggle heavily playing Kimberly, and also she has very long combo, so she's pretty weak, you know, like weak actually hissing. Each punch is pretty low damage. You have to really do, you know, like a long combo right, to really get value from it. So I really do feel that also it's harder for new players because you have to learn to do like a penny combo right um, to really get some, yeah, again value out of it. So I, I do feel that she's probably there. And I, I do think she's harder than Shan Li because Shan Li is very technical, but I think it's harder actually to execute Kimberly correctly. Um, I think so. We have to actually understand how to run and it's a lot of these mix ups and like, what should I press? What should I do now? Uh, when you're running into them or you're jumping at them or you're doing this other throw or you have the, the command input that it's like either a throw or a kick or whatever. Yeah, she, has, she has so much like 50, 50 mishaps, right? yeah. She, she has so much like, <laughs> so much uh, mixing up. I think she is very hard to play. Um, and for example then, if person Jamie, because they're kind of similar to character, they're more like quick character, right? Jamie has an easier combo input. He's, he's, Jamie is technically easier to play than Kimberly, uh, I would say, from like an actual execution input, right? Combo input and also like engaging mechanics. Uh, Jamie is easier to play than Kimberly, but you know, with Jamie's all alcohol and this and that and quadruple combos and so on, he's much harder to play in general. But if you did, if you if you didn't have alcohol with Jamie, you only had his basic thing, right? Or even if, let's say, you you were always uh, four rank with Jamie, right? You were always max rank, so you had more abilities. He would still then he would probably be easier than Kimberly. Um, but having to drink and so on and get it up and understanding when you can drink. That's against even the Amy, right? You have to understand when you can drink safely. Because sometimes you have to drink or have to, but you want to drink, right? Between the fights or whatever. Between you throw someone down. I mean, no, if you don't the fight, but I mean, if I throw you away from me, right? If I do, for example, the, what's it called? Drive reverse, when you kiss them away. So you, you press, you block and you drive. So you push them away from you. You can drink after that, right? For example. Thinking about that kind of stuff, I think it takes a lot of training to kind of learn when to drink and so on. <laughs> so I still, I still feel that Jamie is, uh, yeah. But they're all kind of similar. Uh, because Kimble is also not as good at 
like super close range, right? She's also better at kind of mid range where you can run and do different inputs, you know, different different attacks. It's like with Jamie. So they're actually all pretty similar, I think. Where again, then Ken and Marissa is more like you know on your face, right? They're like here on you, right? Yeah. So if you, I mean, again, Kimberly and Jamie, they kind of here, you know. Right? JP is over here. Kimberly and Jamie are here, and like Ken is here, right? He's like in your face, right there. It's that kind of that mid range thing, right? It's because he's also good at kind of like you know. Uh, entering and so on. Um, Kami, similarly, also fits pretty good at mid range. Nah, I'm pretty sure you know. I think Kami is pretty easy to play. I wouldn't put her in. I don't think Kami is very complicated. I probably put her in the mid thing. Similar to these cats as well, right? She's a kind of some fast character, pretty good inputs. You can do your flying ball team, Charlie like grabs and so on. I feel Kami is pretty straightforward, honestly. You know, as she's always been. I got fast character with pretty good combos. You got your, you know, powerful uppercutter. You got your, you know, like I said, did you turn into this ball thing and control them and go down? So you have different inputs on that. You have your air throw. She, I always felt Kami is pretty straightforward, honestly. Uh, and she, you know, she's quite high damage, quite powerful. Doesn't really have, like, I don't know. I'm not the Kami main. But, but it feels like Kami doesn't have any like really bad matchups, in my opinion. Maybe I'm wrong here, but I don't think so. But I'm not saying she's overpowered. I mean more like, I don't know, maybe Marissa saying if I don't know. I don't, I don't feel that Kami has like really terrible matchups. So I feel she's probably, probably pretty good, generally speaking, all over the place. I don't know. I do feel that Kami is like pretty mid. <laughs> but everything I said, she's probably a little more technical than, than Ken. You know, but less technical than DA, definitely. But DA is always fake as a one, yeah, yeah. Less technical than DA. Um, so mid, mid, yeah, mid. Yuri, similarly, is also probably there. Yeah. Yuri also is straightforward. Aggressive, fast waifu, uh, you know, f big feats and so on. Um, slightly harder than Kami, because you got your uh, resource, projectiles. You have to stack up and so on. But otherwise, you know, yeah, well, if anything, these cats are very similar. Yeah, came in you. They both got their, you know, like, oh, I'm gonna jump into you, I'm gonna fly into you. Uh, uppercut kicking thing. Similar normies. I think, <laughs> I find them actually very similar, honestly. Yeah, they're both like kind of that waifu. <laughs> they're like quick waifu. Waifu, the kicks a lot. Shelly kicks a lot too, but yeah. But honestly, they're very similar, I think. I probably get some hate now for some. Um, you video came in mate. I'm gonna have this discussion of you know ass versus feet, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> both. Um, I think they are very similar. They got, they got like the same stats, you know what I mean? Like they're both like ADI ladies with pretty good kicks and both the uppercut. And yeah, they have very similar mechanics uh, and, and so on. They have, they, have, they have very similar kind of how they play out the game, right? Uh, now again, then uh, you really can kick her stuff thing, which is slightly more complicated because you have to short up as well. But it's not like that much complicated, and I I would guess honestly that that Yuri and Kami roughly have the same level of matchup ratio, right? Where they both struggle with the same character. So what I mean, so let's say Kami is terrible against Sangif, I would imagine Yuri all struggles against Sangif because they both have to get close and so on. Um, probably meet. And then lastly, and also the least, <laughs> I think she is the smallest character, right? She should be. Lily, TX daughter, yeah, she is the, I think she's the the tiniest character, so she could be last year. Where's Lily? So Lily is a weird character. I see her being the absolute bottom rank character this one too. Um, she's like a strange character. She do her wind source up thing, and she feels like a better T Hawk. She kind of does her like, you know, balance thing. But yeah, she kind of dives into you. It's really annoying. I'll say one thing. But I don't know, I, I, I agree it's a terrible character because that's what they play in the game. I struggled, this one guy close to my rank that I fit a lot with Lily, and he, he does this like EX Condor Spike or whatever, Condor Dive, whatever I do. And it's really hard because it always creates like this weird mix up where she's always faster than you, and she can do like S3 or whatever immediately. But, you know, when I kind of learned to play the game better, honestly, when I improved slightly, and you can just like drive impact that, or you can like or drive because you can drive uh, reverse it, or you can like um, parry it too. When you learn how to that that works, you kind of like oh this is shit now. <laughs> yeah, it's terrible. But what I usually do though when I play a character with like a Suriken, like a reverse right, 
every time basically Lily flat into me, I used to do like a shuriken, yeah. <laughs> and they, they beat everything usually, unless they block them, but yeah, obviously. But like, you usually do something weird after that, you can just shuriken them. But Lily feels like a pretty bad character, and playing her is kind of strange. She could reach up, you dive into them. She got, I guess we do the normals. I do think she performs really bad in close range against many characters because she doesn't have very quick inputs and very good normals in, in close range. She's pretty good in like kind of the mid range footsies. Uh, her normals aren't that good in close combat and she can't shoot and so on. And she got this weird like input stuff. Her, her again, her wind forward dive is very good. But she's probably a character that performs really badly, honestly, um, in many aspects of the game. Uh, she's like a hard character, but I don't find her hard to play, right, you know? Yeah, I, I, I agree that she's probably his bottom tier character, and I wouldn't really, but I wouldn't like put her like, oh, she's like hard because she's terrible, right? Uh, that's like, yeah, he's terrible and hard to play. <laughs> no, but I think she's pretty easy to play, honestly. I think she's very straightforward. You charge up your stuff and you dive at them, but you have to probably play her at like slight mid-range or be top of them, depending on the matchup. Um... But I probably would say, she, I think she's easier than T-Hawk, because she's better than than T-Hawk was to close the gap. Yeah, because I mean, she's like a grappler, right? Ish. And she's easier to engage with you than T-Hawk had. And her normals are probably better than T-Hawk had. Yeah, speaking. I used to remember, like, no one ever playing T-Hawk <laughs> in the 4. Very rarely did someone play T-Hawk. I was like, yeah, I guess she's like T-Hawk. Um... I do think it's easy to play, honestly, yeah, I think it's easy to play, very straightforward. I think the only thing is she's pretty bad, so you, I mean, but she's like underpowered maybe, so that's why you're struggling with her, but I, I find it like, uh, but she's very straightforward. You always gonna say the mid-range dive, yeah, I, I'm gonna say she's very easy to get close to them, and then you do your command grabs or whatever, right? So I'm gonna put her in like here probably, that's probably where I will leave the list there. Then we get the full list, guys. Yeah, there we go. The perfect T list for Street Fighter. Yeah, Jamie, my main character, worst character ever. <laughs> but honestly, I, I play Jamie a bit, right? And I do find him uh, underperforming, uh, to say the least. No, but yeah, yeah, I, 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 yeah, honestly, right? If you're a new player, if you follow me the whole list here now, you, you know, I agree, disagree. Uh, I definitely would not recommend anyone, right, in the bottom tier, of course, obviously, for the video. But I think Jamie is a character you definitely should not stop in the game, right? Because, yeah, you... The whole Echo thing is very weird. Is how... I think it's this thing that, like... You can't dive kick until you have one alcohol, which you get easily, but still. It's that kind of thing, it's just like... Oh, it makes it so much more uh, complicated, right? To, to know that. Oh, I need to get one alcohol, then I can dive kick, you know? And that actually makes him feel strange, because... Other characters... Except for Junior Young and so on, the, which he's obviously based on. Uh, they had this like, um, was this special? When they turn into this like rage mode, whatever. They go into like a rage mode, right? They would extend their combos. Uh, <coughs> but they didn't like get new abilities, right? They had the same abilities, but everything kind of comboed. Um, so it wasn't like, oh, if I go to rage mode, now I can dive kick. You can always dive kick, right? So I think that kind of stuff is also why I think Jamie is probably out of power too, honestly. Because, I mean, if you're facing Jamie, in the beginning of the round, you know he can't die kick, right? You have to drink first, right? So you, so you can also eliminate his abilities. And it just, he doesn't have, like, 50 abilities that are amazing or whatever, and he's super drunk I, I, either, right? It's probably is that getting really drunk with him doesn't feel like enough payoff to have the limitations of it. Something like that. But that kind of stuff is really weird with him, right? It's limiting. Uh, JP, as I mentioned, right? You know, he's a control character, hard to play. Uh, Kimberly is probably... The more te both Chun Li and Kimberly are very technical. They're very technical. They're very like weird input attacks. They're very like how do I engage with them and so on. Um, uh, does him of course obviously a lot of that stuff. Dia feels hard because of all his yeah, he's like different uh, things and a lot of inputs. Like he, he's like a hard mode guile, right? I think this is the best way to look at him. He's like guile but hard to play. Yeah, uh, but also better than guile in this game. I think so. I think he's a very good character. So. Uh, Dia, I could recommend for my power level set, but no, but he's fun, man, it's fun. Um, bunch of mid-range characters, and I feel very confident in characters like Ken and Morrison. Yeah, they're so straightforward, 
very simple minded and like Men- Menon, she she is easy mode sand gif. <laughs> easy mode sand gif with boobies. Sand gif with boobs is easy man. I think it's easy. Uh, but Marissa, uh, maybe this is my, my Jamie talking, my Kimberly and Jamie, but yeah Marissa is the armor plus though. I mentioned earlier, I said, I said that, yeah, just that kind of stuff, the armor plus, man, man, that's good for beginners, man, armor plus, you can power through stuff, you can punish driving, type of that, and so on, I mean, but I played this more recently, I know that, right, so I kind of used to that, seeing that, so I kind of, oh, I traveled on my this and so on, but I mean, man, if you're like Bronze League, man, you're gonna walk into her armor plus all the time, probably, um, I think she has to be really good against bad players, like, in, in the beginning of the game, and play her new and so on, I assume so, at least, by far, yeah, just really easy to push them. And I've played a bunch of characters up now from, you know, rank zero, so to speak, right? And, um, yeah, there's definitely a difference there. <laughs> it depends on the characters. Uh, but anyway, this guy, press the like button, it was falling in the video. It's about like an hour, so I expected, though, honestly. Yeah, speaking of that, right? Um, but anyway, so he doesn't have a great deck. 